Hi friends, uh, part two uh, of this um, video regarding, uh, well, the gospel, number one, and then number two, about us being in a world war and most of us not realizing that we are, and of course, therefore, not knowing who our enemy is. So, um, <laughs> a little bit too much light there. Um, uh, a couple of corrections on the last video is that um, I used the word dispositionally, you know, dispositionally, it's, I meant positionally. Uh, we are sin free because Jesus died once and for all, for all time, for all sins, for believers. Um, and by the way, that uh, totally flies in the face, that truth that's revealed in, in scriptures in, in the book of Hebrews, flies in the face of the Roman system, Roman church system, which uh, represents and re-sacrifices Jesus across uh, altars all over the world in their mass. And of course, many popes have said that the mass is the heart and soul of Catholic uh, belief and teaching. I mean, that's the, the fulcrum point. But leaving that aside, uh, also the correction is, I said that when the, you know COVID being uh, one of the two giant false flag events um, in America, I said March of uh, 2022, it's obviously March of 2020. Um, in fact, Trump uh, declared 50 states a federal disaster on March 13th, on Friday, March 13th, uh, 2020. And uh, the disaster that, that actually, well, the real disaster was when Trump declared 50 states a federal disaster because basically he handed the keys over to FEMA and said, okay, now you're running our country. And people don't realize that Trump had no say-so in, in things uh, because FEMA was running everything, and now Biden, same way. So this is not a political thing that's going on here. And all these people are players in the New World Order apparatus, and they're all working to basically bring forth uh, the New Age, which is going to be no more nation-states. It's all going to be one world, one people, one religion, okay? Just like the Bible talked about 2,000-plus years ago. It's all going down before us. And the other thing is, I said in the previous video, that just as the law was a schoolmaster that was meant to lead us to Christ, like, in other words, we just fall into his arms and say, okay, Jesus, I can't keep the law. Nobody in the uh, history of the planet has been able to keep the law. But you, uh, you know, you make us fully righteous because of your perfect righteousness when we believe in you. So what I'm, the analogy I'm trying to make here is that I'm hoping that the things that I talk about, like we're in a world war, uh, the global apparatus is bearing down on us like King bore down on Abel and slew him. They are coming after you, friends, and, and they're not stopping, and their narrative is many faceted and many fold. And so what I'm hoping, again, the analogy between the law being a schoolmaster to lead us and just cause us to just, like I said, fall into Jesus' arms and say, save us, Lord. You know, how do we, please save us from this, this oppressive law. Well, I'm hoping these things that I talk about, people just say, okay, there is no way out other than in Luke 21. If you read that chapter, that is the way out without a doubt. They kind of rhyme. <laughs> it's, it's the way out without a doubt. Jesus is the only way. You've got the, the Titanic basically has been basically submerged for at least 10 years, but it still isn't completely down to the bottom of the sea. And so what I've been trying to tell people is get into the lifeboat of salvation. And there's only one lifeboat and it's Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the way, the life and the truth. And nobody comes to the father, but through me. And if you come any other way, you're a thief and a robber. We don't want to be thieves. We don't want to be robbers. Let's get saved. Let's get in the lifeboat. Uh, with Jesus. It's, it, it might sound a little bit corny, but it's not. It's a reality that is profound. And I urge you guys to get into the book of John and just start reading chapter one and just ask a simple, pray a simple thing. Say, Lord, I want to know if you're real. Jesus, are you the son of God? Are you real? And if you come with an open heart and an open mind, I will guarantee you, and you read his word, even if it's a chat or a chapter a day, or maybe a paragraph or two a day, but you have an earnest desire to number one, uh, just to know if God exists and if God, if Jesus Christ is uh, God. Okay, if you have that desire, He will find a way to answer you, and I'll guarantee you, He will answer you in the affirmative. Uh, he He will answer you in the affirmative, and when you get saved and born again, you'll never be the same, and you'll be so thankful that the Lord 
descended or condescended to you in your miserable, pathetic condition. Because we're all, like I said earlier, I was the biggest loser I knew. But we're all losers. We're all sinners. And we all need Jesus. Okay, so the narrative that they're pressing forward, they're not stopping. Okay, they got the Ukraine, uh, you know, Russian war narrative, which is a completely contrived event. I'm not saying that there isn't actual war type events going on the ground there. I have no way of knowing to what extent that's happening. If it is, it strikes me as like most modern wars, they're, um, well, they can be very real. I, I think, you know, like obviously the Iraq war and other wars, I'm talking about the modern wars. I mean, I, I'm quite sure you read between the lines that these, there were a lot of deaths in that, okay? So I'm not saying that in Russia, or I mean Ukraine and Russia, and there has been a loss of life, and maybe even a fairly great loss of life. But what I am saying is that it is a contrived event, and it's all part of the global design, the overarching design, to get people to say, we can't be fighting each other as nation states anymore. We need one government, one ruler, and we need one currency, and we need one religion. And, th and this is what the Bible foretold. And people like me that are into scripture have been warning about this state of affairs. A one world economy, one world religion, and a one world political apparatus, okay? And uh, and that is coalescing rapidly. But anyway, all these different angles that the, the, the global apparatus is pushing, okay? So you got the war thing, then you have the COVID thing, and now you have the inflation and the econo economy thing. And uh, what am I missing? Well, the, the religious thing. I mean, the Pope, for example, who I believe will be the false prophet, I mean, he's uh, he's a man for everybody, you know. He doesn't want to ruffle any feathers, and he accepts all world religions. He basically says, if you have love in your heart and you're a good person, you're good. You're in good standing with God, and of course, that flies in the face of biblical truth. Uh, he never, I have never heard him really preach the simple gospel. Now, he's definitely not a saved man, but yet the world. Uh, uh, esteems him fairly highly, uh, other than people like me that see what he's about. We believe he's going to play the role of the false prophet. If he doesn't, it doesn't matter. He's an excellent prototype and an example of what's going to come. If he passes away or leaves the papacy, uh, I believe another will rapidly replace him and fulfill that role. But I think he's actually the one. So just pay attention, people, is all I can say right now. And if you think that, like, well, we all know it's not going back to the old normal. Uh, we all know it's going to be a one world currency, and we know that according to Revelation 16, uh, let me see, 16, or no, excuse me, Revelation 13, 16 through 18, we know that the Antichrist and false prophet are going to cause everyone in the world uh, to take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. King James talks about in, and that's definitely going to be the case, whether it's a microchip, whatever the case would be, it's definitely going to be an embedded. Uh, technological tool by which they're going to track you, trace you, uh, you know, basically, well, okay, so Revelation says, 13, 16 through 18, says that no man can buy or sell unless they have that mark of, of the beast in the right hand, in the forehead, and it's going to be associated with the number 666. Friends, we are on the cusp of this, and so I urge you, and if you are left behind because you refuse salvation in Jesus Christ, you refuse to receive the love of the truth, the only thing I can say is that you ask, um, if you're left behind, you're not taken up and out of here, and you're with everybody else, never take that mark. Because God teaches in the next chapter, chapter 14, you should read the whole chapter, that if you take this mark, which is basically saying, yes, I am worshiping the Antichrist, yes, I accept this mark so I can function in society, so I can buy and sell. If you take that mark, Scripture teaches, this isn't my opinion, that you, there will be no repenting of that. Okay, and you will go to hell. So this is why I've warned so many people that uh, whether they're saved or not saved, but a lot of people I sense by talking to them, it's very quick. Uh, you can quickly kind of feel them out and know that most of them aren't saved, the ones that you talk to by what they say, how they say, whatever, without being judgmental. Okay, but I, I just, I said, in case you're left behind, I don't judge them. I don't say, well, when you're left behind, if you're left behind, I have said this for 36 years to friends, family members, strangers, never take that mark if you're left behind. Never take it because you'll be in hell the rest of your life and there's no going back. Uh, the alternative to that, if you don't take the mark, you're going to have a very difficult time and eventually you're going to have your uh, head removed from your body. This is also taught in Scripture. 
and you say, well, gee, I'd rather just take the mark, be able to buy and sell and have a peaceful life. Well, you'll have peace for two, three, four, five, whatever years. And then, as I said earlier in the tribulation period, it ends in Armageddon, all hell breaks loose. Uh, so you'll have that short peace and then hell, or you can have a short hell and then eternal peace by resisting, you know, taking the mark. Uh, I think even Trumpmeister would say, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's uh, what does he say, the art of the deal. In other words, do the art of the deal, don't take the mark. Not taking the mark is the art of the deal. <laughs> I, I didn't quite know how to express it. Have a great one. See you later.